Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics Live. Coming up, we are joined by the father of SharePoint, Jeff Tiefer, to hear about the latest updates to SharePoint, OneDrive, and Office. We're going to give you a tour of the new capabilities to modernize your internet with SharePoint, major updates to expand OneDrive sync and sharing capabilities, deeper integration between SharePoint and Microsoft Teams, and enhancements across the collaboration experience for the Office app. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Jeff Tieper. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. It's great to be back. Thank you. You got a big crowd today. Awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. So it's really great to have you on the show. And there's been a lot of updates announced this week. It was crazy to see how long the blog was from Jared, actually. What's behind all this recent round of updates? Yeah, we made a bunch of exciting announcements yesterday. Our sort of uh, First, we started in the internet, the things we're doing around making great websites easier than ever to create in the web and inside Teams, around fluent design language, branding, a bunch of new parts. Uh, then we talked about collaboration with OneDrive and Office. We're going to talk about some new capabilities there. Uh, a lot of integration for a variety of scenarios with Microsoft Teams. Uh, again, OneDrive and SharePoint plugging into Teams as well as being standalone destinations. And then lastly, we uh, made a big announcement in Satya's keynote with Project Cortex, how we're bringing AI to help uh, companies conquer the skills gap. And of course, we're going to get to Project Cortex. But before we start there, why don't you take us on a tour of something that's known for you, especially SharePoint. So what's new on the SharePoint side? Yeah, our goal with SharePoint is just making it better and making it easier. So we've got here uh, the new SharePoint home site. Uh, this is an out-of-box internet experience we uh, are rolling out this week. And I'm going to take you on a tour through that. Uh, and you can see we've got in this site not only top-level branding for Contoso, but branding for the internet home, the landing, with their color scheme. OK. Uh, and so this is coming out this week. But we're going to show you something that's coming out next, because it's Ignite, and that's what we do. OK. And over here, we see on the right, we see your feed. We're using the graph to personalize your internet for you, showing documents that are trending that you might be interested in, SharePoint news, videos. We even take internet news that might be referenced in email around you and put it in the graph and present it to you in your feed to make it more relevant. Very cool. If we keep scrolling down, of course, we've got more of the curated news. We've got stream video. Uh, we're making intranets even more engaging with video, whether it's top-down or ad hoc video production that is put on your site. And then social with Yammer. Hopefully, people have seen this week uh, that we've got a brand new experience with Yammer as both a standalone destination and connected inside Teams and SharePoint. Here, we're using this for Q&A on this intranet for people's feedback on the company meeting. Awesome. And then lastly, as part of finishing the job and making it easy to just create the intranets that people want, We've got a new footer support where people can create and customize these footers that they want on their intranets and require them across all their pages. So right. that's a quick tour of home sites. We also have an update for that on the phone, uh, and we're excited about it. Cool. So I know something that I'm really excited about, actually, is just the fact that we can do site renames and also swap site routes. I know, I, yeah, they got I know the it's kind of plumbing and probably not as sexy as some of the demos, but I think a lot of people are going to enjoy that, that capability. That was clearly a delighter, the ability to go to the root of your internet and replace it with one of these sites. Let me show you a couple of other things that people have been asking us for that we're really excited to have announced this week. One is multilingual. So here's a site where the content, both overall on the page and inside this hero web part, is in English. And I'm going to go ahead and switch the language for this site to Spanish. And you'll see the page will refresh with all the content in Spanish. And we've done some work to complete the workflows so that you'll get notified if a page changes so you can go ahead and translate it. So a huge source of customer feedback and excitement this week. On and another thing that's awesome, I think, is the analytics capabilities. Why don't you show what that, what that looks like? Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, people have had to sort of grovel through the logs for years in SharePoint and struggle with this. And we're doing more to build in analytics uh, for the site and hubs and uh, your intranet overall. Here we're showing just a couple of slices of the new things we're announcing. You can see, obviously, by device type, and then here's a heat map that shows when is the peak time for traffic on your intranet, what day, what hour. And this helps companies schedule their content and figure out communications via Teams and social and email about when to drive traffic uh, to, your, to your intranet. Awesome. So it's really great to see all these updates to SharePoint itself. But something else that you're very near and dear to, OneDrive. I know we've got a lot of updates to share yeah. there. So why don't you show us what's new uh, in OneDrive? So we announced some 
Big news this week for OneDrive. Well, how big? Well, this big. 100 gigabyte files stored in Microsoft 365 synced through OneDrive, and of course, that's supported in SharePoint and Teams. So really excited about being able to support your largest files, zip files, PSTs, video files, et cetera. But it gets even better because yes. with large files comes a lot of synchronization typically, but we've got some updates y there as well. Yeah, exactly. So Delta synchronization. We've had this for years, as you know, with OpenXML and Office, where if you made changes in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, only those bytes that had changed get updated to the service. But we support hundreds of other file types in uh, Microsoft 365. And we want to bring Delta Sync to those as well. So we're going to go ahead and take this gigantic video file and change the copyright to Microsoft. Go ahead and save the metadata for that. And what's going to happen is only those bytes are patched up on the service. And so I'm going to bring up the OneDrive Sync client so you can see. And we've got about 100K of this 100 meg file. And before I finish talking, that 100 meg file was synced back to the service because we only sync the deltas. That's awesome. It would have taken a long, long time. Now it's just syncing that little tiny delta there. But I know we've got even more to show in the web experience for OneDrive as well, right? Yeah, exactly. So OneDrive, uh, one-stop shopping for all your files wherever they are. This is the OneDrive web experience. You can see we've got shared libraries. These may have been created in SharePoint and Teams, wherever. You can find all of them inside OneDrive. But my favorite new feature is what we've done with this hover card. So I'm going to sele uh, select this document. And uh, you can see that right here, we've got conversations. Um, and uh, we seem to be missing the icons for them. But uh, I will, you'll have to trust me, because this is still in preview, right. that these are the conversations that are related to this document in both Outlook and Teams. So for years, you've been able to go in Outlook and search for a document, but you've never been able to do the reverse, where I'm in a document, and I want to see all the mails throwing, flowing around around that. And so you can now use in this file card uh, to see all the conversations whenever they've happened so that you can update the document for the changes that people have asked you for. Awesome. So lots of great, um, really, really big updates here on the OneDrive side, big in terms of file size as well. Yep. But I know a lot of people, some, a lot of people love dark mode, and I think something that's cool here, we've added a dark mode to Outlook, but now even on the OneDrive side, we also have dark mode on the phone, so you can see it matches the new iOS uh, dark theme capabilities. Uh -huh. All very, you know, very nice and now available in OneDrive as well as yeah, Outlook. Yeah, we've seen the early stats that about a quarter of our uh, iOS 13 users are using OneDrive in dark mode. So it's really great that we were able to get it out to there for them. Very cool stuff. So uh, why don't we talk about uh, Microsoft Teams? I think this is a lot of people are kind of on their way to adopting Microsoft Teams. It's really got that foundation underneath it using SharePoint and OneDrive kind of as part of the files experience or the, the main hero, I should say, of the files experience. Can you tell us what's new there? Yeah. Ex two weeks ago, we had a major milestone where we finished rolling out to production the updated shared Microsoft 365 files experience. So it exists in SharePoint, in OneDrive, and now Microsoft Teams. And so let me go in and get into a little more focus mode in Teams on this. And you can see a rich files view served by SharePoint that's backing this Microsoft team where we've got you know, color-coded uh, conditional formatting on status. We've got uh, bar charts. We've got uh, different kinds of metadata. And we've even got, of course, uh, the, the sync button that would allow you to sync files down to your machine and keep them offline. So that's just one thing we're doing. Another, which is a huge source of feedback, is the ability to copy and paste a URL. And you see, just like that, Teams calls into SharePoint and cool. uses the common dialogue that we've done across OneDrive and SharePoint and Outlook and now Teams so that you can set the permissions on that link so that we can give, just keep it the way it is, people with existing access, or have it be more broadly shareable. Maybe I want Irvin to be able to share that link with other people after the fact. And so yep. it's this common experience on any platform and any app. And then now, if, if you open files, it even yep. gets better, right? Yep, let's go back to uh, that team. Uh, and we will go ahead and click on this annual report. And we've done some work between the Office team and the Teams team to streamline the user experience when the Office apps are hosted in Microsoft Teams to make the performance great, to get rid of multiple layers of menus, 
to clean, uh, streamline our commenting, our anchored in document commenting, so you can have that office collaboration right in Teams without leaving the context. Right, and beyond SharePoint, it's great to see all the integrated experiences, a lot of integration here. I, I think everybody will agree. Now, in Microsoft Teams, uh, the integration also extends to Office, but why don't you show us a few updates that we've made in the Office collaboration side, because that just keeps getting better. Great, yeah, I'm gonna enlist your help there because it's hard to collaborate with yourself. Uh, <laughs> so in this case, I'm Alan, you're right. Adele, your singing's quite good, I love Thank your work. Thank you. And so you can see at the top here, I, Alan, have made a comment anchored on this document where I've at mentioned you, Adele. Okay. And a new thing we've introduced is something we call replies to at mentions. So why don't you show this, that on the phone? All right, so I'm on my phone here. I'm gonna go ahead and this time I'll open Outlook for real. Okay, and I can see I've got a few, um, a few different things that have come through. If I look at the message from you as Alan, I can see that it's here. Nice thing is I can actually see the document. It's linked on top. I can see the context around the content. It's actually highlighted in purple, so I know exactly what it's in reference to, January 2020. We need to be ramped up up to 400 units per day. And inside of my phone, I can say, got it. I could, I could reply with ACK if I wanted to, whatever I want to do here, I'll say got it, do an insert, and now that's going to be sent into the threaded conversation on the dock. Yeah, that's right. If we, if we switch back to my machine, just to sort of go through carefully what's going on there is, we didn't have you on the phone leave the context of Outlook and jump to Word. Your comment is going into Microsoft 365. Exchange is letting SharePoint know we've got that comment. SharePoint's opening up Word and putting that comment in the body of the document. So whether you're in Outlook or in Word, you can see those conversations going on. And it should come up here in a second. And while we're waiting for that, uh, let me show you one of the other new capabilities we're introducing this week, the ability to assign tasks within each of the Office applications in these comments. So okay. you can see the second comment here. I've at mentioned you, Adele, but this one I've marked as special. I've assigned it as a task. And that way, if we've got a workflow where multiple things have to be tracked within the document, I can use the document as a view on the source of truth. And you can see, by the way, Adele, there's your got it that came in. Yep. Um, but these tasks, because they're tasks in the Microsoft graph, you within your task management tools in Teams and in To-Do, in Outlook and uh, Planner we're working on as well, you'll be able to see all in one place all your tasks. So the same data, a document with tasks in the graph, you can see that in the Word view as well as you can see that in your holistic task view. So I'm really excited about the, I think what's the most comprehensive view of tasks in, in collaboration in the industry. Cool, I know we've done a lot of work also to add to what we can do in terms of AI and ideas inside of words. Why don't you show us what's new there as well? Glad to. So here's a fairly complicated document. Uh, as you said, we're using ideas to help people analyze spreadsheets and create PowerPoints uh, and also now be better writers. And so I'm gonna click on the ideas button and you're gonna see through AI and ML trained by users feedback, uh, we're refining this document. And you can see there's, uh, in this case, a few different things that it's highlighted for me. The good thing about this document, it looks pretty good, but let me go into their highlights on conciseness and uh, see the issues that it's found there. And I can go ahead and uh, go and see what's uh, highlighted there for me. Okay, so really cool stuff. Uh, it's also awesome in terms of the phone experience. So I know that we've got a brand new phone experience. Yes, can Speaking you show of my phone here. On the phone? Yeah. So one thing I wanted to show, so beyond all of the different AI and all the things we can help to become better writers, we can also become better collaborators on our phones with one Office app. So we're gonna go ahead and not send our feedback in this case, but we will show you what we can do. So through the one app, I can actually view Word, Excel, PowerPoint, everything here. I see my most recently used documents or MRU, all there, and the common action, some of my favorite stuff, being able to say, take a picture of a table, insert that into Excel, sign or scan PDFs, all of those different kind of phone-specific functions right here built into one app. So very cool stuff in the phone. Yeah, this I've been using this app, uh, our internal version for the last few months. It's indispensable because, as you said, it brings together Word, Excel, PowerPoint, the full versions of those on the phone in a single curated app, as well as having these mobile first actions where we're leveraging things like voice, like scanning to do these common tasks. Uh, I showed yesterday in our talk about the ability to create a survey in Microsoft Forms using AI 
to author all the questions. So it's a great three-in-one experience for the apps you know, but also brings in a lot more of these mobile-first tasks. All right, so lots of awesome updates on the SharePoint yep. side, Teams, the Office collaboration experiences. We've got this Project Cortex screen yes. that we're seeing here. Why don't you tell us about that and what's next? Yeah, so this is, we're incredibly excited about this. We're taking a set of AI technologies across Microsoft and allowing you to apply that to capturing and organizing and discovering information. We've got tons of new content coming out on that. I'm going to give you a super quick tour. I want to show you three things. First, here's a page. I'm a new employee. I'm trying to get up to speed about what's going on. And there's all these acronyms, and I don't understand what they mean, or project names. And here I'll hover on what's been automatically highlighted for me. I don't have to author this page. And it sees I get a topic card. We've magically used AI to generate an enterprise Wikipedia for you of topics and, and pages and so forth. And here's one of these topics, Project Delta, where we've got the experts and resources associated with it. And if I wanted to drill into that more detailed page, that's behind that topic card. We've authored that for you, too. But of course, we know people are going to use the AI to augment their work, and they'll go ahead and edit this and augment it with, with descriptions. Here we've got people, resources, and an exciting visualization of the topic graph. So you can see additional terms like Project Thor and geothermal that are related to it. And then lastly, from the topic card to the topic page, we go to the Knowledge Center, where you see the aggregation of all the topics, highlighting those that are trending or relevant for you, information about contribution. And because Project Cortex is all built on SharePoint, you can customize it. We give you all sorts of web parts. You can add your own. So you really can curate this page and knowledge center experience exactly like you want to meet the needs of your organization. Project Cortex is coming in, in the future. Yep. Um, but where Sorry. would you tell people to go in terms of being able to actually get their hands on this? or learn more about all the different updates that we announced today. Yeah, we announced an incredible amount uh, yesterday. So two URLs that I would suggest, aka.ms M365 Ignite News, and that's where you can get the broad overview. But we know from the excitement from yesterday that people want to learn more about Project Cortex, and there you can go to aka.ms Project Cortex. Awesome set of updates. Thanks so much again for joining us today. And of course, keep watching Microsoft Mechanics. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.